So today we are going to be working on how to get your local business on Google search and maps. And um, it, like I was saying before, it's extremely important for us to have up-to-date information, especially with COVID-19. You want to make sure that um, people know what your hours are. Things are constantly changing. Um, and I'm going to just make sure that we have the sound set up because we have a little video coming up as well. So I will share the sound there. Um, but like I was saying, my name is Emily Feuder. I'm the program and marketing manager for National ACE based out of Chicago. And Grow With Google is something that helps people across the US grow their skills, careers, and businesses by offering free tools, trainings, and events. And in today's workshop, you'll learn how to set up verify and manage your business profile on Google. And verifying and managing your business profile helps local businesses be found on Google search and maps. And for any nonprofits today, this tool works the same for you as well. National ACE is verified on Google. And you're gonna see some, maybe some elements that you've never seen before um, that can help people connect and find your website. So let's get started. Today's workshop it will be divided into five sections. Um, we'll spend the first few minutes explaining what a business profile is on Google and where it would appear. And then we'll also review the steps to creating and verifying your free business profile. We'll also discuss how to manage your business profile. And we'll give you a tour, tour of your business profile and show you how to make updates. And then we'll quickly wrap up with a recap and some suggested resources. So let's see if this works. One moment. I'm just going to share this video for you guys. Um, this is um, a video about a family that it's a family run business and they use Google Maps as well. So it's pretty cool. So let me get that going. Here you go. <laughs> My name is Vince. This is my shop. I opened Village Tailor and Cleaners in 1977. I arrived in New York four years earlier from Italy. It was me, my brother, my mom, and my dad. My mother taught me how to sew. When I opened the shop, the first person I hired was my mother. This is Bruno, the store mascot. My Lula advertisement. As a business owner, you're always thinking, how can you do better? I notice that customers come in with the clothes in one hand and the phone on the other, always looking up information. So I said to myself, we have to put this store online. Google lets me decide how the shop shows up. I pick photos. I can post special hours, anything. I made this website in 10 minutes using the website builder. And I'm not kidding. Now people walk in and I'm always asking, how did you find us? They used to say, I saw Bruno, so I came in. Now they say, Google. Believe it or not, we're up 30% this year. We're doing enough business, I had to hire more tailors and get some new machines. I've got three shops going. And my son, Vincent Jr., is running one of them the village cobbler next door. I'm in an old fashioned profession. I work with my hands. I hadn't thought much about putting the business online. Now, I couldn't be happier. Village Taylor, 40 years and going strong. So as you can see, that's a great example of someone using um, the Google Maps feature to grow their business. And that's the goal. We want to provide resources for folks to be able to continue to grow. <laughs> I was like, play again, one second. So let me just show you guys the presentation again, and we'll go over what is a business profile on Google. So that's it's a free service and it allows your business information to appear correctly on Google search and maps. 
And when you're a verified business profile, it allows you to update your address, your phone number, your website, your hours, and it helps you also answer reviews. So the important thing is business profiles can only be created for businesses that have a physical location that customers can visit. They have to be able to travel to it and you should have hours where they can actually walk in. The general rule is that a business must make in-person contact with customers during its stated hours. So some examples of businesses that maybe aren't eligible would be rental or for sale properties like vacation homes or model homes. Um, or leasing offices unless you have open hours. So if your business isn't open yet, uh, we can discuss that, but there's a way to set it up for it to open on a future date, and then you can verify it later. So here's a look at the anatomy of a business profile. And you can see, once you look on your phone, this is mostly how people are finding businesses. They wanna see the name, an overview of it, maybe some reviews, quick look, links to the website, your location and hours. And then as the business owner, you can add photos as well so that you're filtering the photos that they see. It helps them get a look at your store and make sure they're at the right place, but then they can also see your products. And then this slide is showing an example of a business profile from the desktop. You can see it pops up on the right when you look up Village Tailor and Cleaners. And this is the same place that was in the video. So creating a business profile helps you actually edit this information that customers are seeing. It won't guarantee that your business appears at the top of the search, but it definitely helps. And this stat's pretty crazy. Up-to-date business profiles are 2.7 times more likely to be consider considered reputable. So people are going to visit you. They're going to take you a little bit more seriously when you're on Google Maps. And then up-to-date business profiles are 70% more likely to attract visits and 50% more likely to lead to a purchase. And Appearing on Google Maps is really important because people visit apparently 1.5 billion destinations every month related to their Google searches. And people are searching locally. When they type in, I wanna find a tailor and cleaners, if you're not on Google Maps, you won't show up. So businesses with storefronts that are open to customers and those that meet customers in local service areas, they can appear on Google Maps. So across all devices, they, it does work um, on the phone, on the desktop, on the iPad, and they show a range of details to help searchers find the information they need about your business. And then, so this is how to get started. If you want, you can pull your phone out now, or you can just log in on a new tab while you're viewing this, but you're going to want to type in google.com forward slash business to get the process started. And then when you, if you see the business profile, you can actually click the button, claim it now. And if you don't see it, you can create it. So let's talk about getting started on how to create a business profile in Google if it isn't already there. One of the ways you can access your business profile is by visiting google.com forward slash business. And then if you already have an account, you can click sign in. In order to manage your Google business account, you have to have a Gmail um, and you need to have it associated to the business. So you can cl click quickly create one now, or um, if you already have one, you're going to click manage now. And then you're going to sign into your account. Um, you will need to make sure that your Google account is the right one. Some people have signed up and verified their business and then they don't remember which Google account it is. Um, there's a way where you can figure out which one it is and then verify it that way as well. And we'll discuss that. So step two is you're gonna find or add your business. So once you're logged into Google, you're gonna begin typing your business name and a drop down list will appear. If you see a list of businesses, you wanna scan the results for yours. Earlier, I told you about the Village Tailor and Cleaners. And as you saw in the video, the owner opened his second shop called Vince's Village Cobbler, which is being managed by his son, Vincent Jr. So we're gonna walk through the steps of what Vincent Jr. would do to set up his business profile. And if your business name does appear, you're just gonna click on that and you can, you can skip these next steps. Okay, 
So um, what you want to do is if you type in your business name and it doesn't appear on the list or you don't see the option listed, just click next. And then you want to confirm that your business name is spelled correctly. This is really important. So this is if your business is not showing up when you're searching it, it doesn't exist on Google yet, and you want to make sure everything is typed in correctly. So for us, we would type in National Ace. Okay, so then you need to select a business category. If you can't find the perfect category, choose something close. Start by thinking of a category that you'd like to use and then type in a few letters to see if the option appears below. You can choose an existing category. You can also, but you can't edit or create a new one. And then um, if your business fits into multiple categories, start with the main one. Okay, and then you would click next again. And then step four is, do you have a location customers visit? And you will wanna make sure that you do because it has to be a physical location for them to visit. A lot of places operate out of a private home, but if you have a service area business and you see your customers face-to-face, -face, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you hide your address. You don't, unless you want people coming to your home. So these businesses can still appear on Google Maps without displaying the address or the driving directions. And the areas that you service will be highlighted on the map. Let's say you meet your customers at a coffee shop that could be at one of the highlighted areas. So if there's anyone that, that does operate out of their home and they don't wanna appear on Google Maps, you can write that in the chat right now. And then we can engage separately and figure out exactly how we're gonna highlight that service area. An important note here is that businesses cannot use a PO box as your business address for your business profile. You wouldn't want a new customer driving over to the post office and trying to find you. All right. So if you do have your physical address, you're going to want to enter the complete and official street address, including your suite number, so they can find exactly what floor you're on and where to find you. You don't need to include details like cross streets or landmarks. You're just doing the typical address. And then if you checked no for the address, if you're operating out of home, then you'll be asked to air enter the areas that you serve. For example, zip codes or cities or other areas like neighborhoods and districts. And then this is more about the service area. So for those of you who already have a business profile and selected a service radius around your business, this process has actually changed. You can no longer set your service area as a distance around your business. Instead, you have to specify by a zip code or a city. Also, if your business has a physical address, but it also delivers goods and services to customers, after you enter the business address, you can add the option to additional service areas. So that's just more about service areas. And then you would click next. So step five is you're entering your, in your business contact information and you wanna provide current information so that the customers can actually call. You wanna make sure your website is correct. And then you would click next. A great feature about Google is they'll actually create a free website based on your information if that's something that you need. So you would click this last box down here, get a free website based on your info. And it's a pretty simple website, but it's completely usable. And it's, I mean, more than ever, it's extremely important to be visible online. So it's a great starting point for business owners that maybe aren't so tech savvy. So you're almost done here. You're gonna click finish once all these steps are done with some added photos potentially. And then step six is the verification. So to confirm your business location, you have to verify by mail to prove that you actually have a place of business. So you're going to get a postcard. Whoever manages your mail, make sure that they are checking the mail for this postcard. Um, there's also a way to verify via text, but I think postcard is the most common. And then if your business isn't open yet, you're about to open a storefront, you can click verify later. And then we would 
have your postcard on the way. Usually it comes within five days. Sometimes it takes two weeks. Um, but once you have that, then you can actually get verified. There's a specific code on that postcard for you to now be the owner of your business profile on Google. So once your Google profile is set up and you have your, web, your website set up, you have your Google Maps for your business, there's a couple other services that people really don't take advantage of. And these are adding in services that you offer. So let's say someone types in, for example, they're looking for specific help with replacing a buckle, right? You can see it here on the screen, buckle and hardware replacement, but they don't know the name of your shop. If you add in this service, buckle and hardware replacement, when people are typing in buckle replacement, New York City, now your shoe shop would show up as an option for them to go to. So you're actually able to get more customers based on the services that you offer. And um, you can do that through your, your Google business profile. You also wanna write a business description. So this helps customers get an introduction to the business on what you offer, maybe some history or what sets you apart. Focus on the primary details of the business instead of details on promotions, prices, or sales. You can put that somewhere else. And you don't wanna include any URLs. This is just for them to read. There's no way for them to click in. This is really, really important. Once you own your business profile and you have that on Google Maps, you wanna add photos. People look at photos. Add in a video if you have products. This is a place where you have access, it's free marketing. You can add photos of the storefront, products, services to provide more information. You can also add up to 30 second videos. Um, and this is what people really look at. You'll actually be able to see on Google Analytics how many hits you're getting and how many people are looking at your business. So once you have your photos set up, you can continue updating the business profile while you're waiting for verification. And your edits will only be visible to customers on Google after you've been verified. So while you're waiting for that postcard, maybe you wanna take some new photos of your products and put those on Google. Those will be ready to go once you're live. And then this is what your dashboard will look like for your business profile. Once you're the owner, you're just gonna be able to log in to this business account. You can see there's the home posts, info, insights. Now you're gonna see how many people and how much traffic is coming to your business profile. In this example, this is a verified one. Um, so if you, yours isn't verified, you would see a notification saying it's pending verification at the top. This is the dashboard where you go in to make changes. And then we'll get into how you can manage that profile. So once it's verified, you're going to want to just familiarize yourself with, okay, what does the home screen look like? How do I use the dashboard? What features should I be using? We'll kind of dive into that today. Um, so you can make edits directly onto the search results page once you own it. So this is great as if you're logged into your Gmail, you type in your business name, you can actually go in and edit directly. You just have to make sure you're signed into the right account. So you would just Google search and then manage the info directly from Google. And then here's another example of a business in New York City. We're going to see how they use their business profile during COVID-19 to share how their business changed during um, COVID-19, basically. So let me set this up for us really quick. I will do a... Also a quick intro. Hi again, I'm Emily. And yes, I can send you folks the slides when we are done for sure. So let me um, get this video going. This one's a really good one. So. Oops. Let's get this one started my method. Um, I love learning new things because when I learn... We opened Celsius with the idea to create a laundromat that people actually wanted to hang out in. When New York issued its stay-at-home order, we quickly shifted to drop-offs only. We switched to online booking through our Google profile, setting aside priority times for essential workers. 
We love our community and just wanted to help in any way we could. No, actually, you get lazy when you get. Sorry about that. It looked like a couple videos were playing at the same time. So let's just get back to where we were. And we were in the middle of the presentation. So let's get that going. Um, but basically, we'll get back to how to edit the business name and category. So the business name should reflect the actual name of the business. So you don't want to do any nicknames. You want it to be the name that people really know. So you're going to choose a primary category that best describes your business. And this is all under the info. So you can add up to nine additional categories. And um, let's see what that would look like. So again, you're going to want to set up a primary category that people really know you for. So if, obviously, if you're fixing shoes, you want to say, we fix shoes. But if you also do the buckles or leather repair, you can add that into the category. And you want to make sure your business profile matches the name of your storefront so it's really easy to find. And then... You can edit the address as well under info, and you can drag a pin icon to update the business location. So that lets customers see your business location on Google by adding a street address, and then they can actually map directions to it. And later on, um, you can actually track how many people are using Google Maps to get to your location. And then you also want to confirm your business hours. This is really important right now because people's hours are constantly changing. 40% of local business searchers want to find hours of operation. I know that that's how I use Google um, and that people get upset if your hours have changed and they show up and you're not open for breakfast, right? So you want to keep your customers happy and you, you'll, you would edit this through the info as well. And then more hours applies to special options like delivery, takeout, pickup, senior hours. Um, I mean, some grocery stores are opening still a little bit earlier for seniors to shop. So if that's you, you can definitely add that in. And then on the info tab, you can also add your website and phone number. Website's really important too. People want to click in to learn more information. And this business profile on Google is actually how National Ace gets most of our traffic. People type in National Ace and then they click through that business profile. You can also select attributes to highlight your business details. For example, are you black owned, veteran led, women led? Do you have wheelchair accessibility? Um, people prioritize, you know, businesses that they want to support. So this helps them sort of categorize and decide if they want to give you their business. And then you're going to want to write your business description in info as well. And this is again, where the history sets in. Um, and this is the 750 characters, you're not going to put a URL or anything in there. But this is a section you might want to review periodically just to make sure it's up to date and accurate on the services that you're offering and what you want to present to your customers. In most cases, they're only going to see the first two sentences, so put the important information first. And then in your info, you can put in your opening date. If you haven't opened yet, you can put in a future date, and that's going to be where you verify later as well. And then under the bookings tab, let's see, you can look and see if you need people to be able to book through Google. Um, this is a nice service. Let's say you're a hair salon or you offer professional services. This is a way where people can actually book directly through Google. Um, obviously you would wanna manage this and make sure you're getting notifications when you have a new appointment. And then posts is also interesting. This is something people really aren't using right now, um, but it's again, free marketing. So when someone Googles your, your 
business, you can add in maybe an event post here. You can add in, it's maybe more temporary. They only last for about a week and then it filters to new information. Um, but this helps people with, without a website as well, have more marketing. You can also put in your special business promotions under the posts tab. So here's some examples of what you could do. You could do products, offers, events. It really depends on what your business wants to promote. Um, you can also do announcements here. And this is important. Like I said, 90% of customers are more likely to visit a business that has photos on a search results page. So make sure your business has photos. Ask someone to take some photos for you if you don't have any. Your products will be more interesting to people. If you sell food, people want to see that food. If you sell clothes, they want to see what those clothes look like or they want to see your storefront. Photos help sell products. You can also add videos up to 30 seconds, like we said. And here's some tips, just um, basic one-on-one -on, -one on photos. You want to make sure they're focused and well-lit. Highlight your business features, showcase your brand, maybe throw your logo in there. And people like to see videos too. You could also highlight an employee or show an unboxing of a new product or merchandise. Google Maps is really free marketing. I'll say it again. And you want to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward and really showing what your business has to offer your community. And then, of course, you can add into the products tab where you can showcase the products that you're selling. Again, this is all within the business profile. This is on the left side. You can easily drag and drop photos in there, change the name of it, and then also update the category. And then services, we kind of went over this, but you could add in pricing as well, if that's something that you want to put on Google, if you're not changing a lot. Um, but you could also just describe what you mean by heel repair, for example. And then under the website tab, this is kind of going into if the business does not have a website, you can quickly make one through Google for free. So they do themes, you can edit the text. I mean, this is a very simple one, but it gets the job done. You don't really need to overthink it. It's just a great starting point to get online and not overwhelm yourself with the details of HTML and everything like that. Google can help set you up so that you can start to get some more traffic to your digital presence. And then under the reviews tab, um, this is where you really wanna be checking as well. So a customer can write whatever they want. They can say something really nice. They can say something really mean that might be untrue. The advice here is when you're managing reviews, you wanna be professional and polite. You wanna respond promptly. You don't wanna to respond to people that are upset in another upset way. You just wanna thank your happy customers. And then if someone says something negative, you address that constructively and you're gonna to try to resolve that issue privately. This is just a best practice across the board. So if someone says, I had terrible service on Tuesday, they're calling out your employees. You wanna say, you know, we are so sorry you experienced that. Please reach out to me through this email or through this account. And I wanna resolve this with you. Nine times out of 10, they don't reach out, but it does make you look good to be responding to every review, especially the negative ones, because it shows that you have customer service and you are willing to resolve it. And then once they have, if, if the customer has been resolved and maybe you gave them a credit, ask them to go back and modify the review. Say, you know, let them know how your second experience was and just be honest with them. You're not gonna wanna put that all out in public, but privately in that conversation, explain to them, you know, we wanna make this right. And if it is right, can you just modify that review? Your review means a lot to us. Customers can also send you messages through your Google business account. Um, and this is where you can privately message them as well. It'll appear in the app um, and you'll be notified when you receive the message. So that helps you answer questions as well. And then under the users tab, you can add owners and managers. Let's say you have someone helping you with your social media. You can add them as a user to manage your Google business account. And that also helps them handle your reviews. 
This is great for reporting as well. There's the insights tab. This is all within that business profile. You can see how many people are searching for your business. You can see brands that are related to your business. You can see how many folks are clicking into your website. Um, just great to understand your growth and maybe where you need to work a little bit more on your marketing or your images just to figure out how to drive some more traffic. And here's some more examples of insights. Um, people that are actually clicking in when they type in your Google, you know, through Google, are they clicking and calling you to order their food? Or it, you can also see how they found you directly. So the next steps are, you're gonna wanna go to google.com forward slash business. If you don't hear anything else I say today, write that down because that is the path to getting into your Google account. You're gonna to wanna to claim and or complete your business profile if it already exists. You're gonna request that postcard. It'll come within five to 14 days. And then you can sign in with that code on the postcard to say, yes, I live on 123 Main Street. This is where our business is. These are our hours. And while you're waiting for that postcard, you can do all the things we talked about with the business profile adding the photos, maybe creating some content, talking about what upcoming events are coming, and just starting to think in a marketing kind of space to use this service. And then once your business profile is created, make it a habit to check in. You don't wanna have 300 reviews waiting for you that you need to respond to, especially if there's some negative ones. This is how people see you before they walk in the door. You wanna have your best foot forward. You're gonna to wanna to have your info correct, your photos, your videos, your posts, and then explore your insights. If you're trying, if you have specific business goals, say you wanna drive more traffic, Google offers these analytics for free so that you can keep track of it without having to sit there with a pencil and figure out, okay, I think this is how many people walked in today, right? And then there's a couple more resources to help you get started on your business profile. You can promote it with a marketing kit and um, that is within your profile. It's g.co forward slash marketing kit. And these are all free as well. Um, it helps you create custom posters for events, social posts, and you can update your reviews to get a little bit more out of the, the tools that they offer. And then if you want to sharpen your business skills a little bit further, Google offers some free lessons on your phone through g.co forward slash primer. And you learn something, it's, it's like a five minute workshop just so that you start to start thinking in a, a marketing way for the digital space. And then another great resource is the quick help videos and you can get answers and learn how to make the most of Google's tools in just a few minutes. So you'll learn things like how to get your business listed on Google search and maps, that's in there, how to create a YouTube channel, how you can start a Google Meet conference, just how to kind of move online in a more seamless way. And then if you wanna continue your education, you can register for free workshops through Google as well. That's g.co forward slash grow on air. And then there's always free training resources here. There's things for local businesses, for students. If you're searching for a job, if you're trying to develop, these are free tools for you to use to develop yourself or to develop your organization. So that's everything that we have today. Thank you so much for joining us. If you registered for the webinar, we will send you these slides. And then I'll also put my email in the chat if you have specific questions about anything that we talked today. But we so appreciate your time. And thank you on behalf of National ACE for joining us. And we hope to see you again on the next event.